I won the world's heavyweight championship by beating the champions of every country in the world in their own country. Tommy Burns was born Noah Brusso in Hanover, Ontario in 1881. A tremendous all-round athlete, Burns excelled at virtually every sport he participated in. A fine hockey player and skater, he challenged the world speed skating champ to a race when he was 17 and lost by one second over three miles. Burns was also considered the top young lacrosse goaltender in the country, but got bored playing between the pipes, so he became a forward and led his team to the Canadian Junior Championship. He moved to Detroit to work in his late teens, and while playing lacrosse there, a rough and tumble sport in those days, it was suggested he should try boxing. That proved to be an historic move. Burns immediately showed tremendous promise as a fighter. Tommy turned professional, proved to be an intelligent ring technician with explosive power, racking up an impressive undefeated record while capturing the Michigan middleweight title. Despite his small stature, five foot seven and 160 pounds, Burns was ready to bag some bigger game. So he moved up to the heavyweight division where he continued to dominate. Because he was so much smaller than his opponents, Burns was almost always the underdog. He often made more money betting on himself than he made in purses. In February of 1906, Burns challenged Marvin Hart for the World Heavyweight Championship. Hart handpicked Burns because of his size, but Tommy stunned the champ and all the experts of the day by knocking Hart out to capture the title. Burns went on to defend the belt 13 times against every worthy challenger, including Philadelphia Jack O'Brien, the world light heavyweight champ. Both belts were on the line, they fought three times the first two were draws, even though most observers thought Burns won. He finally did get the decision in the third encounter between the two champs. Burns abdicated the light heavyweight title so he could hang on to the heavyweight crown. One of his title defenses came against Bill Squires. The champ starched the highly regarded Squires in less than a round. At the time, it was the fastest knockout in heavyweight championship history. The champ traveled around the globe to fight the British, Irish, French, German, and Australian champs. His record of most knockout wins by a heavyweight champ stood until Joe Lewis broke it some 35 years later. Burns' desire was to be the best fighter of his day, and unlike his predecessors, was more than willing to put his belt on the line against any man, regardless of race. And he would break the color barrier 35 years before Jackie Robinson. In 1908, he agreed to defend his title against the legendary Jack Johnson, who was six inches taller than Burns and about 45 pounds heavier. Burns had been sick in the weeks leading up to the bout and tried to have the fight postponed, but the promoter had sold all 25,000 seats for the fight and refused the request. Despite appearing jaundiced when he entered the ring, Burns gave Johnson all he could handle. The bout came to a controversial ending in the 14th round after Burns had been knocked down for the third time in the fight, with Johnson being declared the winner. Burns had landed some big body blows during the bout, and Johnson spent the next few nights in hospital. There is film of the fight, but mysteriously, the footage in which Burns had his best rounds is nowhere to be found. Some racist sports writers of the time were so upset that Burns lost the coveted title to a black man that he was vilified. All his tremendous accomplishments as a fighter were ignored. He was painted as a feeble excuse for a champion and that a good white fighter like former champ James Jeffries would have beaten Johnson. Jeffries was coaxed out of retirement and was demolished by Jack, the new champ, but the damage was done. The Canadian's legacy was destroyed. The record shows that Burns, the little giant of Hanover, fought and beat every credible challenger of his time, including light heavyweight champ Jack O'Brien, who was named as one of the top 50 fighters of the first half century by Ring Magazine. He never got another shot at Johnson or the title, but Burns would later claim the British Empire Championship. Tommy, who developed training methods well ahead of his time, would pass his knowledge on to Canadian troops preparing for battle in the Second World War. In the stock market crash of 1929, Burns lost the large fortune he had amassed. He also lost his wife and children, who would move to England. Burns returned to Canada, where he worked with disadvantaged youth and eventually became a preacher. 
After suffering a heart attack while visiting a friend in Vancouver in 1955, at the age of 74, Burns collapsed and died. He was buried in an unmarked grave. A few years later, a group of Canadian athletes and sports writers, led by Hockey Hall of Famer Cyclone Taylor, flew to Vancouver with a proper headstone and held a special ceremony more befitting of one of the greatest all-round athletes in history. As to myself, you may rate me where you like. 